Hello from Lansing, Michigan. I'm here in our little kitchenette. Uh, just reading an Associated Press article. Very interesting. Listen to what I'm reading here. This was a couple of days ago. Paris. New results from a look into the split second after the Big Bang indicate the universe is 80 million years older than previously thought, but the core concepts of the cosmos seem to be on the right track. Uh, Notice what this next statement is, second sentence in this article. The findings released Thursday bolster a key theory called inflation, which says the universe burst from subatomic size. Subatomic, note the word subatomic. How about (laughs) so small as it can't even be seen? Smaller than an atom. Burst from subatomic size, the entire universe, to its now observable expanse in a fraction of of a second. Wow. What a concept. Now hold that thought. Go back to Immanuel Kant, the philosopher, who um, said that the universe has always existed, contradicting the Bible. Go back to astronomer Fred Hoyle, who in the 1950s pushed his steady state theory, stating the universe had always existed. And here we have science now well established on the facts proven by the red shift, Doppler, uh, and other research, science, science theories to show the universe has not always existed, that it was created in a second, a fraction of a second. Okay, hold that thought. Let's go back to the book of Genesis, Genesis in the Bible, where it says the same thing. Fascinating, isn't it? Now, I mentioned this story because Uh, You've probably run across several people, as I have, people I I do like, I respect, but who really seem to have a conviction that Christianity is just shy of being a fairy tale, that it's a joke, and that any serious person really cannot entertain it. This is, uh, in my opinion, the biggest fallacy and the biggest um, error I've ever encountered. Because the research consistently supports the Bible, as we just saw. The facts, the history, the archaeology, the, the, the pure science support the Bible. And we're surrounded by a creation so complicated, so highly advanced, Uh, a biology that we cannot reproduce. You know, this hand right here, science can't reproduce one like that. They can give you a mechanical one. They can give you a a metal hip that will last for a few years. They can't give you a hip like you have. The complexity of God's creation is just mind-boggling. The evidence is all around us. And yet some say, as I just heard the other day, why doesn't God show up? Why doesn't he appear in the sky and say, here I am? The answer is because this life is a test. God gives us the evidence, surrounds us with the proofs, yet he leaves us an out. If I or you choose to disbelieve and reject God and his role in my life, God gives me the right and the ability to do that. And someone also said, you know, uh, that those who want God to appear seem to have forgotten that he did. 2,000 years ago, he came, born of a uh, Jewish woman in an occupied country, lived 33 years, and then we killed him. He lived a life of miracles, a life of holiness. Even the worst critic cannot accuse Jesus Christ of evil. He was either Lord or he was a lunatic or he was a liar. I don't think anyone would say that Jesus was crazy, that he was nuts. He was just too sane, too clear in his wisdom. He wasn't a liar. His life didn't show that at all. So we have the third option. Jesus Christ is Lord. Indeed, is God who came into this world to testify to us that he is, as he says, the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. That's what he said. John 14, 6. So I want to encourage you today as you watch this, as you consider how God has supported everything he's written in the Bible, uh, as you think about what he's called you to do, that you'd have the courage to step forward and believe what you know in your heart is true. Praying for you today.
appreciate you listening to this broadcast. God bless.